Well, here comes the ice cream bunny. <laughs> Christmas time will be so sunny. <laughs> Hello, I'm Faith, and welcome to Faith's Take, where I talk about anything and everything that I find interesting. And welcome to my last Christmas video of the season, my review of Rift Tracks Live, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. This is a show that will always be new and dear to my heart, since my parents and I were actually there to celebrate my 21st birthday. We're even in the audience in the credits of the thing. So when I realized that this video was going to be a little after Christmas, I figured what better day to put it up than my actual birthday, December 29th. To make it even better, this is one of the worst and craziest movies we've seen on a live show so far, and it results in one of the greatest shows Rift Tracks has ever done. So let's dive right in with Rift Tracks Live, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Of course we start off with some shorts. Three shorts to be precise. The first being Santa Claus's story. We open with Santa visiting a house on Christmas Eve, and being so loud that he wakes up the two children in the house. He then sits them down on his lap to tell them a Christmas story. The most classic of Christmas tales, the story of a monkey's Christmas. But not before going on a thousand different tangents. Oh, oh this is so much easier at the poor family's houses. Oh. How would you know our name? Because he said, rest up, that's how. Now, lad, don't make me call Krampus. Well, he's not a real family. Come on, Jackie. Approach the intruder without question, kid. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. I'm really Santa Claus, and I want you to believe in me. Now, where does Mom keep the, the silver? Don't believe in Santa Claus. I'll tell you about the monkey's Christmas. Ooh, sure, the monkey's Christmas. Wait, what? <laughs> monkeys, you know, are very much like human beings in many ways, and sometimes they do the very same things that we do. Why, here's a monkey Black Friday <laughs> stampede. <laughs> They like to get out in the open. But here is Charlie, a good little monkey who likes pretzels. Oh, can we go and one Christmas without like the story of the Charlie water. the pretzel monkey Charlie getting jammed down our throats? <laughs> You've seen people like that who don't want to give anybody else a chance. Oh, well, it's all in fun. <laughs> Great moral, Aesop. Well, eating monkeys celebrate other holidays, too. Like Lysmas and the Festival of Flinging. <laughs> But open wide now. You, uh, you folks Monkey really feel in the holiday spirit monkeys. right about now? Yeah. Sometimes monkeys... That's good for all of us to know, isn't it? Santa, what in loving Santa hell are you talking about? What it's... else do I know about this? They can't have a chimney unless they have a house. So there's nothing else to do but build a house. Even though they were drummed out of the Mason reunion for their shoddy brick handling. <laughs> yeah, nothing good ever came from giving a monkey a drum. <laughs> After his story, Santa openly insults the kids and continues to spout some bizarre nonsense that's even worse than what we've heard so far, and he talks about how children should believe in Santa no matter what. Though after hearing this, I think we can assume that Santa is NOT in fact real, and that this man who's been talking to the children is just an escapee from a mental institution down the road. See children, monkeys are very much like you in many ways. Except one. What way is that? They know they're monkeys, but you don't. Santa, you're kind of a dick, aren't you? Uh, I know I'm not a monkey. They think that nothing can be which is not comprehensible to their little minds. All Holy minds crap, Santa is, is insane! insane. <laughs> yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Santa's plagiarism scandal dominated the North Pole tabloids. And you know that they abound and give to your life its highest beauty and joy. That's Santa's neighbor's dog Santa dictating Claus. this to him. <laughs> you might as well not believe nobody sees Santa Claus, but that is no sign that there is no Santa Claus. So Santa's like the bacteria. <laughs> things in the world are those, but there is a veil covering the unseen world which not the strongest man. Yep, Santa's one step away from scrawling an angry manifesto in a cabin somewhere. Oh, come and watch the monkeys. Oh, come and watch the monkeys. Oh, come and watch the monkeys. That Christmas with Santa Claus. Oh, that, that, that just <laughs> sort, of, sort of drops off a clip there. <laughs> Next, we're treated to the tale of Custer the Dragon. Now don't get too excited, since it's nowhere near as cool as something with dragon in the title should be. Kinda like How to Train a Dragon 2. Anyway, here we see a few children dressed in their old Halloween costumes getting ready for Christmas. And we meet the titular Custard, a coward who's being given a confining cage for Christmas. 
All the while, a whispering narrator speaks over their antics, and in rhyme, no less. Jack Bauer has 24 hours to save Christmas Eve, despite the fact his show was canceled years ago. The Tale of Custard the Dragon by Ogden Nash. Ogden Nash voted poet whose name most sounds like a winter clothing catalog. Belinda lived in a little white house. Footage of little white house unavailable. Okay, David Blaine better not come out of that thing at the end. Now the name of the little black kitten was Ink. Ink, because she was covered in prison tattoos. <laughs> and the little gray mouse, she called her Blink. Because gray things blink so much? I guess. Got bricks on his face, sure, he is yeah, a dragon. Yeah, yeah, all dragons got bricks on their of faces. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. A barrel full of bears, clawing at each other, bloody and confused. A delightful Christmas image. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> Ink's wasted on Custard eggnog again. But Custard cried for a nice safe. I renounce age. Christmas. Ink and Mustard rudely asked his age when Custard cried for a nice safe cage. And Dr. Seuss said, these rhymes are whack. If you ask me, old Ogden Nash is a hack. Seuss out! Yo! <laughs> Once again, we have a short that starts out weird and gets even crazier as time goes on. In this case, we go from having several children just running around and topping their Christmas tree to having a grown man dressed as a pirate climb through their window. But of course, Custer the Dragon gathers up some courage and defeats the pirate by devouring him. And that's our happy ending, that a little dragon boy ate a man alive. Grab these for Mrs. Bearded Pirate and my little bearded kids. But up jumps Custer, snorting like an engine. Ah, all shall fall before the terrible wrath of Custard. Oh God, Custard, no, don't do it, man. You're already on probation. Oh, Custard, you've killed again. Blink, call the cleanup crew. But they didn't hit, and Custard gobbled him every bit. My God, he's got a plate full of pirate remains? <laughs> Ink and Blink in glee to gyrate around the dragon that ate the pirate. Which he proclaimed tough and stringy and could have used barbecue sauce or something. <laughs> Their pagan dance of death lasted well into the night. <laughs> Keeps crying for a nice, safe... Custard's place. killed and eaten a man, so opening his presents early on Christmas is comparatively a minor offense. <laughs> At night, Custard also becomes a werewolf. He's a complicated character. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years later, Custard was granted a retrial, but DNA evidence showed he was incredibly guilty. <laughs> and Custard, Custard the Dragon! The dragon. <laughs> For our final short, we have Santa's Enchanted Village, brought to us by one K. Gordon Murray, who you may remember as being the man who brought us Santa Claus. And once again, Murray takes us to the weirdest places that no normal person could imagine. In this case, we see the titular village is inhabited by mostly child elf servants, Santa, and of course, Merlin. However, they aren't the focus of this production. No, after a brief tour of the village, we focus on those most timeless of Christmas characters, Puss in Boots, the Ferocious Wolf, and Stinky the Skunk. Celebrate the birth of Jesus with a clown puppet, albatross, and poodle. This is the best known of Santa's many homes and offices. K kids love Santa's office. <laughs> and its big clock reminding Santa of the time of the year. It's quarter past October. We gotta move, people. <laughs> Cinematography by Abraham Zapruder. Each village has a North Pole of real ice. Causing compasses to malfunction and airliners to crash. And in the second place, ice cream break was over more than an hour ago. Kids love it when furries have labor disputes. Yeah. Back to work in the toy. Puss in Boots, also known as 30 pounds of carpet with a suffocating kid inside. We are Santa's elves. We're all stuck in hell. Diddly -diddly. Every day's a hideous nightmare. Only death will quell. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Ten thousand curses. Where is that stick? Uh, great Phil's drunk again. I'll go tell Santa Claus. Oh, my ulcer. Uh, can we go my one Christmas without the Christmas wolf with the ulcer being jammed down our throats? <laughs> <laughs> 
His theme music is an accordion played by John Cage having a stroke. Thank you, worm tongue and boots. If you've been too distracted by their terrifying forms to pick up on it, the ferocious wolf and puss in boots are some of the slave drivers of the village workshop, and they need to keep stinking and their child laborers in line. And where are their employees slacking off to? Why, a non-Christmas related puppet show, obviously. And while you'd think they're all just goofing off at the show, the tone of their cheers really says that they're being threatened by someone with a nail-studded baseball bat off-screen. But the wolf finds them and puts them all back to the grindstone. Oh, what is it, Mr. Wolf? It's that skunk again, Mr. Santa! I haven't seen him since ice cream break! I'm just gonna ignore you and openly mock you for a while. <laughs> it's been 16 hours he pays attention to me! If I give an order, they may or may not follow! Alright then, all we can do is add to the chaos! <laughs> And there, my psychotic break is now complete. Oh, yeah. Okay. Soundtrack by Weird Al falling down the stairs. <laughs> Merry Christmas, <Yeah>. everyone. <laughs> it's rare that a puppet show isn't the creepiest thing in a theme park. The goats, they've seen too much. <laughs> He's saying wonderful, but his tone is more like, there's a man in my closet that only I can see. <laughs> wonderful. Oh, help. Ah. Classic tragedy right there. You know perfectly well that we have a deadline to meet. The rarely seen well. double home alone. Bob, you get out of here this instant. He's not so much ferocious as he is concerned with workplace efficiency. Okay, so just to recap, Santa's toys are manufactured at offices that are overseen by a ferocious wolf, and he delivers them all over the universe using a fifth dimension that Merlin discovered. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Upton Sinclair wrote a book about this place that made the jungle look like Goodnight Moon. Now, oh, damn my nine-year-old arthritic hands. Don't <laughs> damn. I don't know, kid. Maybe, maybe the doll head station is not for you. <laughs> Look, just give it up. <laughs> I need both of you tonight. <laughs> Ralphie's eye ain't gonna shoot itself out. Right. My place is crazier than Arkham Asylum. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> it's very good. And that's Santa's Enchanted Village, folks. Finally, we have the weirdest tale of all, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. We open the film in what's supposed to be Santa's workshop, but we can all tell it's just a redecorated Sunday school room where we have more underage elves who seem to love their jobs a little too much. We're suddenly slammed into a new scene in Florida where we see Santa stuck on a beach. Our drug lady narrator explains that it was too hot for the reindeer, so they just abandoned Santa and left him on the beach to die of heat stroke. Santa then uses a siren song to call all of the local children to come to his aid. Oh, and did I neglect to mention that this is a musical romp? Well, it is in the sense that there are lyrics and music played simultaneously in several places, but whether those moments actually count as musical numbers or not is still up for debate. Santa's original toy shop got foreclosed on, so now he works out of his mom's basement. <laughs> ah, Snoopy's affordable Russian cousin, Snoopskia. When Girl Scouts join the clan. <laughs> Thousands of miles from the North Pole, way down in Florida. Yeah, I've had some Valium. J.J. Wow. Abrams guest directed the shot. Lens flare! What would he do? Continue to sit there seems to be plan A. Well, my predicament lacks its usual cheer. Usually his predicaments are filled with cheer? Well, yeah, cheer is what predicaments are all about, Bill. <laughs> okay. Who will? Who will help me? Who will set me free? Sting will set you free if he loves you. Okay, there are conditions. They would be here. Hey, grass! Or is it corn? I, uh... And now the origin story of a terrible superhero. <laughs> whoa, whoa! For them, I fear, my predicament lacks its usual cheer. Uh -huh. 
Because Christmas Day will soon be here. So I have frozen who many children with my dark Santa who magic. Will help me. Who will set me free? Well, anyway, time to die on the beach. <laughs> Eh, first I'll just dream up a dumb story about monkeys. <laughs> Bobby! Huh? Ranta Redry? He's Bobby! wrapped in the rand! <laughs> I just shattered my leg, Santa! I can't talk! Girls! Non specific girls! Mike! He? <laughs> you better go, Mike. He seems powerful. Cassie. David! Charlie! I can't lend you any more money, Santa! Kid! Kid who doesn't get the dignity of a name! <laughs> kids come running for the great taste of Santa! As the kids run to the aid of the Jolly Man, we see that Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn are in town, and they decide to go see what these non-fictional children are up to. But don't worry about them, they never factor into the story in any way. The kids try various ways to get Santa's sleigh unstuck by finding random animals to help pull it. And no, we're never given any explanation regarding how a bunch of ten-year-olds found horses, pigs, and guys in gorilla suits meandering on a Floridian beach. Hey Hop, where are all those kids going? I don't know Tom, let's go find out! Alright, let's go! Now let's call our friends, the Great Gatsby, Anna Karenina, and Yasarian to help us out. Yes, Tom Sawyer, famous for his sleeveless Hawaiian shirts. And what will happen to Christmas without you? Well, now you know that old Santa has never let you down before, and Santa isn't going to let you down now. But you <laughs> never going to give you up, run around, or desert you. You've been Santa rolled. <laughs> Just around up there. That might be a good idea, except what would I do with my sleigh? The embarrassed boy hanged himself later that evening. Hey, what? Is that from Santa Claus? Hey, it is Santa Claus, Tom. But what are you supposed to be doing here? What do you suppose you're I doing know. here? <laughs> all those little boys and girls all over the world <laughs> waiting for their presents. Okay, and tilt down to the sand and hold it there for several seconds. Perfect! Santa, can this common beach gorilla help? That's it. Back him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. Oh, he won't budge. Who knew mules could be so stubborn? <laughs> it's nice of him to try, but I don't see how Guy Fieri is going to help the situation. There's some local guy with a livestock and gorilla suit emporium who can't believe his luck today. Oh, there goes my heart. Oh, well, it was bound to happen. Oh. When in the Fort Myers area, be sure to visit Wandering Farm Animal Beach. This doesn't work. I guess nothing will. All Is right. his sled made of dark matter? Right. I mean, how heavy can it be? Now, what do we do? What do we do? Walk the three blocks into town? Uh, don't be absurd. Oh. <laughs> I have never been so in my life. Two days later, the raisiny, fly-specked corpse of Santa was found by a group of boogie boarders. After they give up on that pointless filler, Santa sits the children down to tell them a completely unrelated non-Christmas story. Between this and the monkey Santa, does Santa actually know any stories about Christmas? Regardless, he tells them the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. We begin the tale with Jack singing our backstory. There are giants in the sky. Boy, I wish. But alas, no. This Jack sings about how his family used to have a hen that laid golden eggs, but that it was stolen from them, and now they're dirt poor. But he chooses to stay optimistic despite their hardships. Poor Santa. He was so discouraged. She's trying to set him on fire with her mind! Die, 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 die. Now, children, you know that I have never disappointed you before. Well, yes, you have, Santa. There was no flamethrower in my stocking last year. Here we go. We used to have a magic heart. Discount Greg Brady, ladies and gentlemen. We used to have a wondrous hen oh. that laid us golden eggs until a thief broke in one night and grabbed it by the leg. Mom shot him! Toorooroo, 
to Rallu What's the use of feeling bad? We should have locked the door. And got a rhyming dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> We then cut to a man named Honest John, and in addition to stealing his name from Disney's Pinocchio, he also cheats people into buying his lousy cows and making terrible deals with him. And as the old story goes, John offers to buy Jack's family cow in exchange for some beans that he claims can magically transport you to other worlds. When Jack doubts him, John sings a terribly dubbed song about how Jack should trust him at his word, convincing John he is not. But apparently that song is all the convincing a dope like Jack needs. Just another one of your phony publicity tricks to sell more cows. Instead of wasting your time on this, you ought to sell better merchandise. The Storybook Land Chamber of Commerce is not pleased. I didn't make you buy her. Colonial Guy Argues with Cool Dads of the 70s was a terrible show. <laughs> I presume you're looking for a bargain in a new cow? Well, no, sir. My mother asked me to bring my cat to town to sell her. You see, we need the money very badly. Jack's not wearing a sign that says cheat me, but he might as well be. Magnificent. These magic beans can transport you to untold riches. Professor Harold Hill shuts off the movie, disgusted at his technique. John, yes, that's my name. This is not my voice, however. Who's the man that put him there? And he'll say, I'll. Oh, it all to Honest John. You know, it is true. Warren Buffett did the eulogy at Honest John's funeral. Now remember, Santa is telling this story to the children. And then Honest John broke into a tuneless, horrible song, and the revolting townspeople all joined in. My said to bring home some money. And if you don't find the magic, bring them back, and I'll gladly give you a dollar for your cow. What'd you do today, honey? I stood around to watch a kid sell a cow. <laughs> Jack ends up taking the beans home, and of course his family isn't pleased. He and his sister go to return them and retrieve their cow, but Honest John has already fled. Jack's mother angrily throws the beans out the window, and a cheap-looking prop crawls toward the sky. Jack climbs the thing to discover that there's a gigantic castle above the clouds. He doesn't bother to question the logistics of it, so why should we? He goes exploring, and do you know what he finds? A giant woman, a giant Yes, a giant woman and her overbearingly gruff husband, the They're master of the castle. castle. Oh, Jack, how could you? How could you be so stupid? <laughs> That's you what my well wife said after I... Well, after a lot of things, really. really. <laughs> yeah. you give me the money for the cow. And make sure that rascal doesn't take advantage of us again. Show some skin while you can. One day you wake up and bam, you're a far side lady. The sign is gone. So is our cow. Who am I going to take to prom now? You and your silly magic. Give me those beans. Magic Beans by Monsanto. Look, it's a giant beanstalk and it's climbing to the sky. I need to see where it goes. The sky! You just sat with the... Ugh. Huh. The three little pigs put up solar panels. Nice. Solar panels. <laughs> Pronounced it wrong. Pandering. Well, I have to be real quiet as I crouch outside this door. The Muppets Baby's Nanny After Dark. Raggedy Ann regretted asking to become a real girl. What do I have for lunch? Because I'm hoping for roasted spring ramps and a bed of arugula. Thank you, dear. <laughs> They're subletting the castle from slightly larger giants. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yes, yeah, sing an aria before meals with the Pavarotti diets. I'm John County as Wolf Ben Jack. Another verse, huh? Okay. Jack discovers that it was the giant who swiped his family's hand, and he decides to steal it back. Luckily, he's able to nab it while the giant takes a nap and takes the shoddily made thing down the beanstalk with him. After successfully making it home with no complications whatsoever, Jack and his family have their wealth once more. News of Jack's adventure gets around, I guess, because soon Honest John sets up shop again and is conning everyone into buying his so-called magic beans. Well, I said bring me the magic hand, not some foil-wrapped leftovers! Ah, oh, that's more like it. I love our quiet moments together, hen! 
Jack catches Mrs. Giant whispering on the phone to Paul Bunyan. Uh, <laughs> ah, IMAX Torgo. <laughs> And now to just climb down this wobbly plant for 10,000 feet while gripping a heavy object. My magic hand is gone. Damn them Duke boys. I knew I... Look what I have, my magic hand back. Really? Is it hidden inside that big ugly toaster cozy? The giant hit you when he fell asleep, I took her hand back. These people sleep so deeply a giant was able to burgle them? So I thought the hand was the best. Welcome back to the secret lives of rural Liberace impersonators. <laughs> no one should dress like this unless they're a cartoon cricket. It won't happen again. God, don't look at me! <laughs> like he groped my eyes. But we don't have a cow. There's always a price. What's your price? One hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? You know how many eight tracks well, that could buy? For riches. The only problem is we don't have a hundred dollars. Perhaps I could interest you in our easy payment plan. Bad credit, no credit, no problem! Riches for only $10 down. And we could pay for our payments from the riches we receive from the beans. We should be getting our return from that nice Mr. Madoff oh, soon, too. Way of spreading the wealth and happiness. Meanwhile, Jack climbs back up the beanstalk to find his father's missing magic harp. How many magic items did that family have in the first place? How did Jack even know the giant would have the harp just because he had the hen? Once again, we're never given any clear-cut answers. And also, once again, the giant is conveniently asleep at the perfect time for Jack to come in and swipe his possessions back. I don't see why I can't go again. After all, he's got my father's harp. And why should he have that? Your father was a harpist? I, honestly, Jack, your dad seems why awful. Why do you want to risk your life on a silly... Magic chicken, you good on the fireplace, Mantle? Bark! Love you, magic chicken! Bark! Kind of hoping for a crazy mid-climb bird attack this time. I love creepy crawlers. I could eat them all day. Gwyneth Paltrow says they're a superfood. Helps rid the body of toxins. Oh. Nothing like a good meal of creepy crawlers to make a man feel good. Yeah. Makes him want to yell I louder than his mic can handle. Up my bag of gold. I can say song. Uptown, funk you up. Funk you up. Oh, I almost wish I'd stolen that magic didgeridoo instead. You know, for my money, nothing says magical palace in the clouds like louvered folding closet doors. Even the hippest Brooklyn hipsters want its neckline to calm down. <laughs> What's that smell? It's your favorite food, dear. I don't want that. I want something more filling. Hey! Whoa, a wormhole. Oh, Whoa. she's back. That's more like, it's like it. Interstellar, only uh, uh, better. Maybe? Yes, yeah. yes, much better. First rule of a secret mission: don't dress like Danny Partridge. <laughs> we need a harp prop. Here's eleven cents, and you have three minutes to make it. Fat, hairy guy sleeping in a giant mushroom. That's my idea of Christmas. Jack scurries back down the stock to take his prize home and decides that he needs to stop the giant problem right now. What's the most logical solution? Drop the stock down as the giant is climbing down it and murder him in cold blood. Okay, I know that the giant was threatening to kill Jack if he found him, but Jack got away pretty easily both times. And last I checked, you don't get the death penalty for stealing. But Jack makes his own laws and kills for what we'll optimistically assume is the first and last time. And he and his family and friends celebrate the giant's grisly death well into the night. Yeah. Thanks, movie. If we didn't see every moment of his climbing, we'd be all, How's he lower now? <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Oh. oh. There goes the thief. When I catch him, I'll break his bones. Better yet, I'll force him to watch an entire season of Bones. Black-hearted beast. I know, I'll chop it down. Oh, Jack, don't get mud on your tough skins. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a vine sounds like, sure. God, ah, shrunk to normal size. God, no, I'm dead. Well, that's the end of the giant. <laughs> I feel quite. She wasn't so bad. 
she just got mixed up with the wrong kind of thing. Hey, should we let Custard the Dragon out so he can oh, feast yeah. on his remains? <laughs> Unleash old Brickface. We then abruptly cut back to the story that we thought we would be following this whole time with Santa and his immovable sleigh. Surprisingly, the kids are still willing to help the fat man after his tail and try one last plan to save him. Santa, however, gives up and takes a nap, waiting for the kids to attempt to free him again. And somehow, even after all of the absurd previous endeavors, their last effort is the most ludicrous of them all. They find a hideously deformed rabbit in a fire truck who Santa can hitch a ride with. And this isn't just any mutated bunny, this is the ice cream bunny. Even though we never see anything involving ice cream, his truck isn't even an ice cream truck for crying out loud. And I think this movie proves Santa actually isn't real, because no other person would react to this creature in such a positive way. But the two of them drive off, abandoning the kids, and the sleigh disappears. Which begs the question, if the sleigh could be moved with magic this whole time, why does Santa need help getting unstuck in the first place? Ha, what? Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. What? Wait, wait, what? What? <laughs> Guys, did you just see that, or is my brain fully melted? I'm pretty sure it's both. Huh. Huh. Well, you know, you're going to get some of that in yeah. Florida. Yeah. Santa, we found someone even creepier than you. <laughs> it's me, the ice cream buddy. I've got all the ice cream flavors, from sawdust to Robitussin to backwash. <laughs> Ice cream bunny, no. Come on, man. I'll pay you the vague. Please. Don't run us down, man. I got a family. Oh, no. Ice cream bunny, God. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I didn't hit another stroller, did I? I can't see anything. Help! Oh, oh. Mr. Bunny, please. Don't, don't, don't conduct the music, please. You've got a lot of precious lives on that thing. Two hands. Thing about an ice cream bunny, he's got lifeless eyes, black eyes like a doll's eyes. Bow down before me, puny humans. Cower in fear as I blot out the sun. The ice cream bunny, of course, of course. Of course. Oh, Santa's a close talker. <laughs> Do you think that we'll be able to make it on time? Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> uh, really? Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Okay, we need a plan. Let's figure this out. I got it. We'll break the sleigh into kindling. Susie, you kill and gut that gorilla from before. Roger. They all want to see the sleigh, but only from that one particular side. Yes. They're waiting for him. And there you have it. Have a deeply disturbing Christmas, everyone. Thank you very much, much. Ice Cream Bunny. Ah. Thank you all so much for watching. I've had an absolute blast making these Christmas and holiday videos the last three months. From Halloween to Life Day to Thanksgiving to Christmas, it's been awesome. I've had so much fun discussing all these specials with you, and I sincerely thank you all for watching and interacting with me. It always makes my day. I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year. Time will be so sunny. <laughs> or he'll get Santa on his way.